Well, Samsung had a lot to prove after what happened with their Samsung Galaxy Note 7. But the thing is, if someone still asks me the best smartphones of 2016, I say the S7 and the S7 Edge. And there's only so much that you can do to make better a product that is already best, right? Well, Samsung has just made the best better. If you don't know me yet, my name is Sid. And in this video, I'll be telling you all you need to know about the newly launched Galaxy S8 and the Galaxy S8 Plus. But just to give you a hint on how I like these phones, they look fucking awesome. Now, the reason why I said that is because it's true. The bezels have been thrown away from top and bottom. They have been trimmed to the bare minimum. From the sides, the edge display is now there by default. The phone looks a lot futuristic and most importantly, unrealistic. I remember till a couple of years back, these kind of smartphone designs were shown in concept smartphone renderings. They were fictional and now they are a reality. But there is more to it than just bezel and screen. The home button has now been removed. Instead, you get a set of on-screen navigation keys. But the phone has got a vibration motor just like the iPhone inside its display. So it basically gives you an illusion of the button being pressed without there actually being a physical button. But in lieu of this, the fingerprint scanner has now been shifted to the back of the phone. Now, I don't generally like rear fingerprint placements, but I'll tell you in a while why on Galaxy S8, that is not a bother. But to sum it all up, these phones have got one of the most attractive designs I've seen on a smartphone for a very long time. And they also make me realize how old I have become. Things of the future are now a part of the present. Now let's talk about the displays. If you're like me and you prefer compact phones, you'd cry when I tell you. The S8 has got a 5.8 inch screen and the S8 Plus has got a 6.2 inch screen. Samsung, where's my stylus? Well, but if you were fond of using the S7 Edge, you'd be rather pleased to know that despite having a bigger screen, the S8 has got smaller dimensions compared to the S7 Edge. Moreover, the resolution has received a slight bump too. It's now at Quad HD+. Plus, plus this display is now more vibrant compared to the predecessors, which is amazing because S7 and S7 Edge had flawless, gorgeous, super AMOLED displays. Now let's talk about performance and cameras. These are the first smartphones to ship with Snapdragon 835 CPU on board which is a 10 nanometer chipset with boost in terms of GPU and CPU performance and battery power efficiency. However, if you are outside of North America, chances are that you might get an Exynos variant instead. But what is a little bit more disappointing for me to know is that the RAM is only 4 GB. Forget OnePlus 3T, even Samsung's own C9 Pro has got 6 GB of RAM. So as a personal opinion, I don't think there was a reason for not to change the RAM. And talking about things that are unchanged, the rear camera is similar in terms of composition to the last year's predecessor. However, there is an improvement this time. The phone can click multiple photos at different level of exposures and give you one single photo with the best setting for you. Uh, and also talking about other improvements, the front camera is now improved. Uh, it is now at 8 megapixels and also features an autofocus. And now let's talk about the extra features. Let's first start with security. Remember a while back I told you that you might not face any discomfort using the rare fingerprint scanner? Well, it won't be a bother because you might not even have to use it. You can instead use the more secured iris scanning or the faster facial recognition that Samsung has given on board this time. Apart from that, you get the usual extra features like S -Pay, uh, Samsung Pay, Samsung Pass and the new improved S Health. But the newest kid on the block is Bixby. It's Samsung's own voice assistant that allows you to do things you never knew you could do with vocal commands. Things like turning brightness up and down, turning volume high or low, or rotating a photograph, you can now do all those things just by talking to your phone. Bixby also uses your rear camera uh, to scan your surroundings and give you suggestions based on it. It's so damn good that Samsung has had a dedicated button for, to activate Bixby for you. And one more extra feature that I would want to talk about is DeX. It's basically a docking station which connects your smartphone to peripherals like uh, a display, a keyboard and a mouse and you can have a full-fledged desktop computer right from Samsung Galaxy S8. Okay, now enough of the good things. Now let's talk about certain issues that I can foresee with these devices even without using them just by looking at the spec sheet. The first issue is a personal issue of mine which is my gripe with the FAP lens. 5.5 inch 2 now seems outdated with LG and Samsung stuffing in even bigger displays with the newest flagships. 
But again, that's a personal preference. A more realistic issue would be that if you've ever used the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge, the edge tends to be a lot finicky. The phone tends to be a lot finicky because it reads fake touches from your palm. Uh, and this time, there is no flat version available. Moreover, when you've increased the screen size, even though you haven't increased the dimensions of the phone, reaching the topmost corner of the screen, in my opinion, with a single hand would still be an issue. But the biggest issue that I can foresee is in terms of battery. Now, I haven't used the device, so I'm not commenting on endurance one bit as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use simple mathematics to prove my point. Listen, Samsung Galaxy S7 had a 5.2 inch Quad HD display and it was powered by a 3000 mAh battery. Samsung Galaxy S8 has got a 5.8 inch display, but the battery is still the same. And battery on S7 was not fantastic. It was just decent enough to last throughout the day. But even if Snapdragon 835 is very power efficient, I still think that for a 5.8 inch Quad HD plus display, 3000 mAh of battery seems rather inadequate. But what's even more ludicrous is that Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus has got 100 mAh of less battery compared to the S7 Edge, but 0.7 inch more screen real estate compared to it. And you might say that it, the phones have got fast charging and fast wireless charging on board as well. But for me personally, that's not a good excuse. So to sum up my opinions, the Samsung Galaxy S8 seems like a promising flagship and looks like an amazing smartphone. Uh, I cannot comment on any other aspect as of now. I can only comment on the spec sheet and that looks pretty much decent. You can say that RAM and battery could have been more on these smartphones. But then again, they could have been more on an iPhone too. Uh, apart from that, the phone gets launched on 21st of April in select countries, but its pricing or Indian availability is not yet known. Do keep in mind, this is by no means a full review or a definite verdict. This is just my opinion on what I saw in the launch and what I read in the spec sheet. The full review will come to you when the device comes to me in India. And the best way to stay tuned for that is by hitting that subscribe button. That's a wrap for my views on the S8. Do tell me your views in the comment box below. Do not forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And do not forget to share it with your friends. My name is Sid. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.